Hi there folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. We got a good one for you today. What you see to my left is an old Evinrude trolling motor. It's a 12 slash 24 volt trolling motor. It's an interesting setup. It has it so that you can switch it from 12 to 24 volt on the foot pedal. And at 12 volt it runs a whole different set of RPMs than it does when it's on 24 volt. 24 volt sounds like a fan. It's like so, but I've used it once. I don't like the cable style trolling motors. There's people that do. I'm not knocking people that like them. That's fine. It's personal preference. Uh, I wanted to upgrade this one because I do have on my other fishing boat a Minn Kota Altera. And Altera is like the top of the line, does everything you want it to do trolling motor, which is, you know, it has spot lock, it has navigation control, it has uh, where you can network it with your fish finder, it will follow paths, it will do crazy stuff. You can even control it from your fish finder because it's networked. I didn't need all that for the banana. The banana, all I want to use that for, and I'm, I'm going to primarily do some bass fishing and a little light trolling with it. And, but I do love the spot lock because there's nothing worse than being in, a, in an area on the lake and it's like, oh, I want to stay here and then get the anchor out and lower the anchor rope down or, you know, a Minn Kota makes a power anchor that works great. I've had that on the boat as well. Once I switched over to a trolling motor that had spot lock, I've never looked back. So ever since I've had this banana on the water, you know, I want to go fishing with it. I want to do fun things with it, but I also want to be able to just stop and sit in one spot when I want to. And this trolling motor that I've got to my right here is what will do that for me. So today we lose the old 12 slash 24 volt Evinrude trolling motor. And we're gonna hook us up a brand new Power Drive 70. That's 70 pounds of thrust, 24 volt trolling motor. So let's get busy taking this old girl off so we can put the new one on. And you may notice I'm not working in my shop today. Well, that's because my shop's got some stuff in it. I can't make enough room to get the boat in there and it's raining outside. So if you hear some traffic in the background, that's because there's cars passing by on the main street in front of my house. Without further ado, let's jump in and take this one off so I can start putting a new one on. And I'll show you how I have my battery layout and my wiring set up for this particular trolling motor. Let's dive right in and get busy getting some work done. First thing we're gonna do, it looks like this one has four screws holding it in place. And it looks like they're just lag screws that are kinda, sorta, into the bow of the boat. All right, folks, that took a little of no time to get that old trolling motor off. Four screws that lift it off, unhook the three wires, it's out of the way. This brings me to my next topic. I got a dirty spot here that's pretty dirty. Now, this isn't greasy, but this product will work well in this area as well. I'm talking about Super Clean. Now, I worked with Super Clean here a while back, and we did a little giveaway. And Jessica from Super Clean had reached out to me again and said, hey, do you want to do a giveaway? And I said, you bet I do. I'll do a giveaway. I like your products. I personally have bought more Super Clean than I have been given. So can I say this is sponsored? No. Is this product placement? More than likely, yes. So, but I wouldn't back up or endorse or recommend to my viewers anything I didn't believe in, period. So what we're doing here today is we're going to do a giveaway. When this video airs, July 3rd of 2021, that's when I want people to leave in the comments below the words super clean. If you leave word, the word super clean in the comments below, if you leave no other comment other than that, your name will go into a drawing to win some super clean products. And what you will win is an aerosol can, foaming can of super clean heavy duty degrees or squirt bottle of super clean and a super clean camouflage hat. I don't know about you guys, but camouflage is my favorite color. Rules of the drawing will be there will, this drawing will end one week after this video airs. I will announce the winners on the following week's 
video, the very next video, the winners will be announced. All the winners have to be within the, the United States. Now that's one thing that Super Glean told me I had to do because they don't want to ship outside the United States. So I apologize for anybody that's outside the U.S. that doesn't get to participate. Um, but uh, that's just the rules, and that's what we got to play by. I will, I will do the drawing on the video. You will have seven days to reach out to me. My email address is in the bottom in the description. Once I announce your name, I will need you to email me. You will have seven days to email me <clears throat> your contact, excuse me, your contact information, which includes your full name, first and last name, and your mailing address. I will turn that over to Jessica at Super Clean. She will ship these products directly to you. I will not ship them from me. They won't ship from me. They will ship from Super Clean to you. If there's any other rules or contingencies to this giveaway, it will be down in the description. I appreciate everybody that participates and watches. And I wish all of you good luck. Now let's clean this dirty spot up. Now as I tell everyone, let's clean this up before we put this other trolling motor room. But as I tell everyone, follow the instructions on the can or the bottle or the paperwork on anything you're getting ready to use. And I would also suggest try this in a small area first to make sure it's not going to damage the product you're trying to clean. This is a good, strong cleaner. It's actually removed scum off the outside of my grill that is baked on, caked on for months at a time. I've sprayed this stuff on it and it remarkably removed all the stain down to the stainless steel the original stainless steel, I was impressed. I didn't think anything but a sandblaster would clean that stuff off. It looks like it lifted that dirty spot up pretty easily. Of course, this is designed for more greasy applications. And the other thing it really, really, really enjoys is cold water rinse, not hot water. You think most degreasers enjoy hot water? Not this stuff. Well, as great luck would have it, folks, the weather has broke here. I looked at the radar. The, the rain has stopped. It looks like it's going to stop until about 5 p.m. this evening. So I'm moving this show back towards the shop, closer to my tools, and outside where there's better lighting. Perfect timing, Mother Nature. Thank you very much. All right, let's crack this bad boy open. Looks like a box that could have a, have a leg lamp in it. Wouldn't that be cool? One weedless prop. Well, there she is. Not mounted yet, but just sitting where I think I want to put it. Uh, I'm debating on whether to mount this just a little bit sideways like this. I believe I will. And I'll tell you why. Because when this thing is not, when it's down and not supported, this can bounce a lot. And I can make me a little bracket that sits here and holds this. A little Velcro strap here to hold it in place as to take stresses off all this bouncing around here and going crazy. So this is the Minn Kota power drive. Let's uh, dig into the manual here. Let's see what I got to do to mount this bad boy. Looks like we'll go ahead and remove these side plate screws to gain access to the mounting surface. Now that we have the side covers removed, we gain access points to the bolt or the bolt holes or the place where we can put bolts in to fasten this down. As you can see, this is a release pedal. I'm pretty sure when this is vertical, this latches into there and you can release it to pick it up and stow it away. To deploy it, you have to push down on this and lift and push forward to get it out of its little stand here. But that's difficult to do without it being fastened down. All right, this is the part that almost makes you want to get sick. Drilling holes in your boat.
ahead and put the prop on just like it takes a half inch wrench and it says discard red washer discard it don't use it you would be ridiculous if you did we'll pull this collar off the drive pin there line all that back up we'll put just the copper or just the stainless washer back on with the nut gonna solder up some real cool connections I'll show you what they look like when I'm done and I'll leave links below in the description some of you may cringe when you see what I'm gonna do to the trolling motor wiring that it came with but it's not long enough Now the way I have this hooked up, you know you can't see it all, is I've got two 40 amp breakers here. The old trolling motor required a 12 volt circuit and a 24 volt circuit. So, and it had two leads coming off of it, which required me to have two wires. It actually was a, a interesting setup because it was a three wire setup. It had the two of 12 and a 24 volt wire, and then it had the ground. Well, this one obviously just has the two wires coming off of it. So you have the negative here and the positive so i just picked up the 24 volt lead here and made it made things real easy to hook up now also on this boat if you might have known i've seen if i got a a, a noco genius uh dual bank charger so i can charge both batteries independently of one another and uh it's uh and i got a plug over here i'm not sure if this is in the shot but i can just plug a drop cord in and it automatically takes care of the batteries for me. I don't have to do anything else. So that's how the batteries are all connected. And let's show you how it works. I zoomed out a little bit so you can see a little more. So yeah, here's my Genius battery charger, dual bank charger. Right here is the plug. It has a, a male here. So all you gotta do is plug your drop cord into it and charges up the batteries, maintains them, does all the fun stuff. So you don't have to worry about them. Now let's take a look at my install. Uh, so another piece of install that I did here. I haven't cleaned up all my mess yet, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing and get the idea. One of the connections I put on here was this here connection. Um, I'm not sure. Uchen, U-C-H-E-N. I'll leave a link in the description below. I really like these connectors. The nice thing about these is they're a quick disconnect. You'll see these on heavy duty things like forklifts and stuff like that, electric forklifts. These are a smaller version and I've got it so it handles the right gauge wire. Uh, the wiring that was on the original trotter motor only came to here. So I took the opportunity to put a quick connect here and run it on through and fasten it up to the rest of my electrical system there. And granted, you wanna make sure you use the right gauge wire here to do that. I'll leave a link in the description below again on the wire that I used. You guys probably think I'm crazy, but I took the original terminals that were on here and cut them off because I've got a better way to do it. So, only thing I got left to do here is a little bit of wire management so this is fastened down and doesn't flop around on me. Oh, the other cool thing about these is they come with a little cap. So if you unplug it, you actually can protect the ends so they're not exposed, which is really nice. The other thing I typically do when I'm not using my trolling motor is I'll trip this breaker. This breaker is designed to be tripped on and off. Right now it's on. You just heard the trolling motor beep as I turned it back on. Now we'll take a look at the trolling motor itself. As you can see, I have it mounted. I use six lag screws. Now most people might cringe when they uh, see that I used, did this. This actually had originally, the old trolling motor had four lag screws and it looked like that trolling motor had been on there for, you know, a couple of decades possibly. I put six larger lag screws into it with six new holes yeah, I hate po poking extra holes in the boat, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now this one here is, does not have a foot pedal. I intentionally ordered this one without the put, foot pedal. I wanted full remote control only. I'm gonna show you the remote here. So here's the full function remote control. It has start. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate so you can see the prop here. Of 
cool part is you can turn it on. You've got increments of half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, all the way up to 10. And this is a 70 pound thrust. I'm standing over here behind the camera outside and I can actually feel the air blowing across my legs from this propeller. The other cool feature it has is this button right here that says it's got an anchor. What this will do, it will allow you to stay in one spot. You turn the anchor thing on, the anchor lock on, and it will be like a you're throwing an anchor out of the boat. It'll hold you, it's a spot lock, it'll hold you in that location via GPS, which is really, really cool. The other feature it has is that true north, that true north heading there. You hit that in button, and wherever wherever you point this thing, whether it's left or right while you're out on the water, it'll maintain that heading, which is really cool. I find that to be very helpful if you're wanting to go from A to B and you know you got your point, you know you can point it in a certain direction. This thing will compensate all the wind, any currents, and anything like that, and keep you heading in that proper direction, which is really awesome. The other feature I liked about this one is you can actually take a look at your battery here if you want. It'll show you the condition of your battery when it's not running. You just hit test. It lights up and tells you what condition your battery's in. I'm hoping that's showing up. Looks like it is. I also, on my, on my boat here, I also have the voltage on my switch panel as well. So I can also monitor it there. Not a big deal. Here again, here's what the upper part looks like. Nothing too fancy to see here. The only feature I'm concerned about on this particular one, and I'll let you know as time wears on, is this has three AAA batteries, and it takes two screws to remove it, this cover to get at the batteries. So I will carry some extra batteries and a, and a Phillips screwdriver in the boat, obviously, to make sure I can, don't lose control of uh, having, or lose having control of my trolling motor because I don't have the remote, because it's remote operation only. Now it does come with a nice lanyard and a carabiner that clicks onto here as well. So you can wear it, you can wear it however you see fit. Enough about that. It also has waypoints on here that you can store as well, which is actually pretty cool. I think up to 12, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. But push and hold this button, it shuts off the remote. I'll trip the breaker to disconnect the trolling motor. And when you're in the boat putting it away, you can basically just lift up on here and push this little lever right here, it releases it. And you can just pull it right back into place. And this is probably a lot easier from the, what I found on my other one, is it's way easier to do it from the boat than it is to do it here. And you got your lock here to keep it from falling down. Now they recommend, if you're gonna be towing this, to go ahead and slide your collar clear down to here so this doesn't accidentally vibrate out and deploy, because <laughs> that could be kind of a mess if that was to hit the ground or it could just break stuff, right? Especially if you jackknife the trailer a little bit and don't even realize it's down, you could really screw things up. One of the things I noticed on my other trolling motor that I have is that these, when you're trailering and going down the road, they're, you know, everything runs pretty smooth. Or if you're not using this a lot for the day, for instance, uh, you're on rough water, this thing here will sit here and do like this. It'll bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce, which puts stresses on your fasteners that are hooking it to the boat and just in the unit in general. So this is where I'm gonna take advantage of my 3D printing stuff. I'm gonna design me a platform that sits here, possibly put four screws in it to hold it down and it'll come up and it'll be a cradle that this sets in. And I might have a Velcro strap that goes around through that cradle to actually secure it. And that way this thing's locked to the boat nice and solid. None of this will be happening, which I think would be a big win there. That's why I, I mounted it on this boat in this fashion, uh, I don't want it hanging over in the bow area, interfering with a fisherman that's up front possibly, or myself fishing up front. Uh, so, and I can also use the gunnel area there on top to mount a fixture to help support it. There's a method to my madness generally. I'm usually thinking two or three steps ahead. Sometimes I don't, and that's when I get in trouble. A couple last things I'm going to do here is these exposed holes here. I'm going to put some silicone in that, clear silicone, smoosh it down in there so that is no longer exposed. So in case it rains, I don't end up getting moisture soaking up in my wood that's underneath this uh, glass here. Very important. And uh, But this thing is, I mean, I can shake the whole boat just by grabbing it here and nothing's, nothing's wiggling. So this is very securely mounted. 
I like how it turned out. Well, that wraps up the install portion of this program. I appreciate you guys following along to this point. Next, I gotta get it to the lake. And my plan is early tomorrow morning to get to the lake, throw a few fishing poles in this boat, and let's try it out and see if we can wrangle up a fish or two by any stroke of luck. Uh, that's the whole idea behind all this, right? You got a boat, you wanna get in the water. Recreation or fishing, your choice, your pleasure. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out so far. Uh, the 35 horse that I've mounted on the back of this thing has actually performed very well. You've seen it in previous videos. Uh, it, uh, the way, lake I'm going to tomorrow is actually a no wake lake. So I won't be able to exercise the full potential of that 35 horse, but I will be able to exercise the full potential, uh, potential of thy Minn Kota power drive. We'll see you at the lake momentarily. For me, it's gonna be about, I don't know, 16 hours. For you guys, it's gonna only be a couple seconds. Now folks, if you ever find yourself having to launch a boat by yourself, there's some simple things to do. First thing, you're gonna unhook your boat to the point where you feel comfortable with your boat not sliding off your bunks or your rollers. You wanna leave the front hooked until you get down to the water. Then you can unhook the front. Once you get down to the water, I have a length of rope here that is gonna let me hit the brakes, cause the boat to jump backwards a little bit into the water, but not too hard. And then the rope will catch it. I'll be able to retrieve it, pull it over to the dock, tie it off, put the tow vehicle away, and I'm ready to rock and roll. So let's back this thing down the water right now. All right, let's go ahead and back it down into the water. I'm showing you it from this direction for the simple reason. I want you to see what the rope does. You guys know what the other end of the boat does when it hits the water. Make sure you got your drain plug in though, that's for sure. Blame, drain plug is in, fuel line is connected. And when possible, I like to dump in near, as near to the uh, dock, if there's a dock next to it, as possible. It just makes life a whole lot easier. Now that the boat's floating, I can hop out and pull it to the dock. There, now the boat's floating. The nice thing is it's still tied. To the trailer. Now I can gently ease the boat or the trailer out without beaching the boat. I'll admit that wasn't as smooth as some of my other times of doing it. Now we can go and park the tow vehicle. Another feature I'd like to talk about on this here is the cruise control. This little button on the bottom left over here is the cruise control. The nice thing about it is you can set it at the miles per hour you want to troll at and it'll maintain. So I've got it set at 1.7 right now and it'll maintain that 1.7 for you automatically. The other thing I'm doing right now is I'm doing a heading. I'm just pointing the trolling motor in the direction I want it to go and I've locked in this, the end button here and that'll maintain that heading automatically. So we've got crosswind, waves, wakes and whatnot it will maintain that heading for you. Well, we're gonna sit here and troll a little bit, see if we can get anything to pick up my flicker shad. Be nice to catch one fish today. You know me, I'm never out here just to try to slay the fish. I'm just, you know, I'm happy to fish for anything that's biting. So far, the old 35 horse ever improved has proven to be a pretty good motor. Uh, it hasn't given me any issues yet. Looks like I need to tighten up the handle a little bit. People often ask me, what are you going fishing for today? And a lot of people, you know, target specific species and whatnot, and me, I just fish for what's biting. 
and sometimes I fish and nothing's biting, I still fish anyway. I know trolling is kind of a lazy man's way to fish, but I'm okay with that. Because I come out here to relax and enjoy the weather. Uh, hoping it don't rain on me today. Uh, we've had some pretty good overcast, so it's made it, kept it pretty mild out here. Water temperature running in about 74.81 degrees. That's pretty chilly, actually, compared to what it was just a week ago when it was in, running in the 90s. We were running 84 degree water temperatures. That was like bath water, just about. It's doing a pretty good job right now. We've got this thing, it's set at 1.7. My old Garmin fish finder says it's 1.75 miles per hour running, so that's a, it's holding it pretty good. I really like this thing. And that was one of the main features, like I told you guys before on this trolling motor, and this video is primarily about the trolling motor and a little bit about the banana. But uh, I about got it all equipped up the way I want. The, the last big thing I wanted to do was get that trolling motor on it. Um, the means of propulsion is satisfactory. It'll do, with this prop that I've got on it right now, it's a, a 10, 11, let's see, what is it? 12 pitch prop. I've got a 12 pitch prop on this right now. Top speed that I hit today was 26 miles an hour. Now what's crazy is you drop down a pitch, which is 10 pitch. We were hitting, uh, you could probably hit 27, 28 pretty easy. So what that did basically is it gave more power. You know, it's like downshifting from uh, fourth gear to third gear. It gives you more oomph. Uh, gives you a higher RPM and the RPM makes up for the pitch difference. Plus the blade diameter was probably, I think it was a 10.3 versus a 10.1, something like that. Anyway, but no, I'm pretty happy with the boat. She floats good, she sits good. She actually sits better with one person in it than two, honestly. Um, I think what would help this boat out a lot is this 35 horse is pretty light. Uh, I reached out to Tahatsu to see if I could get them to sponsor me on a uh, sponsor me on a motor, and I'm looking for a 50 horse, and a 50 horse will weigh about 200 pounds, which this motor here probably weighs about 70 or 80, which that extra 100 and 120, 130, 140 pounds hanging on the back of this boat would actually cause the rear end to sit a little lower in the water, which would pitch that front end up a little bit better which would be actually pretty nice with two people in here. Not to mention it would, with two people in here, it might actually balance and sit pretty flat. One thing I do like about this boat over my bigger boat is reaching over the side to retrieve fish. It's a little less deep, um, which is kind of fun. But uh, you know, it's a, it's, you feel very stable, very safe and secure out here. Uh, I don't know, put my feet up, relax, enjoy life. Right now I'm running at about 8.2 feet of water. I'm trying to go over here to this rocky shoreline. I'm working my way across the width of the lake here and getting over to this rocky shoreline. And uh, we'll go from there. Now I wanna mention again, like I did at the beginning of this video, if you're still here, you still hung in this long, the super clean giveaway. Uh, like I said, there's a aerosol can, a spray bottle, and a camouflage hat that says Super Clean on it. That's gonna that uh, three lucky winners will win this time. Uh, Jennifer, or Jessica, sorry, Jessica at Super Clean uh, was very accommodating when I told her. I said I wanted more than one winner because I've got quite a few viewers and quite a few people uh, actually leave comments. Uh, so I wanted to do something for more than just one person. So she agreed to do three which is fantastic. Uh, you guys have seen my videos. I, I didn't do a really big demo for the Super Clean product in this video. Uh, it is, you've seen me remove some pretty nasty grease from some products that I have or some outboards that I have. Uh, that's the only thing I use uh, cleaning my outboards is the Super Clean. But you also wanna make sure you flush it really good with cold water. It really responds well to cold water. Now the other thing I have done when I've got greasy plastic components and whatnot, is pour a little bit of that super clean into uh, a container, plastic container, and let my parts soak in it and use it just like a parts washer. That stuff works really great in that application. Then you just take it off, rinse it with cold water. I've had really good success with it, cleaning it with it that way. But uh, there again, like I said, once, the, once this video airs, it'll be seven days later, it will be done. The drawing will be done on the following 
Saturday, so this coming Saturday, which is this Saturday, which is July 3rd, is when this video will air uh, Saturday morning, most likely, sometime Saturday at least, and it will be done ten day, or seven days later, which would be July 10th. On July 10th, the video I released then, will have the winners announced. Like I said before, three winners. You've got to be in the U.S. That's uh, the agreement I have with SuperClean. They don't want to ship outside the United States. Uh, so the, the continental United States, they want to stay. So it excludes Alaska and Hawaii. I'm sorry, Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, also, also, once I announce the winners, I'll give you seven days. That's seven days to reach out to me. My contact information is in the description below. Uh, there's my email address is there. I check it daily. So on the email, please send me your name and mailing address. Well, folks, we're having a good time out here. Uh, we're at, trolling right along. One feature I do like about this is we have the cruise control. I've got it locked in at 1.7. I might bump it up a notch to 1.8. Just dragging some flicker shad behind me, two colors. Yeah, we're running along this rocky bank line here, which is pretty cool to look at. Beautiful scenery and uh, having a good time. Trolling motor's working perfectly, doing everything I want it to do. I tried the spot lock, it locks me on it. Doing the cruise control, cruise control's working. The heading picks up the heading and keeps me in a direction. All I gotta do is make minor tweaks if I want to kind of veer to the right a little bit I'll just bump it to the right just a touch and then it'll just just like I just did there and you'll see the adjustment in the background and then it'll just maintain that heading uh, those are some really fantastic features uh, I know a lot of people like the foot controls uh, nothing against that at all I uh, don't mind the foot control I chose to go without a foot control in this boat um, not sure if I can even add one to it I think I can if I wanted to but for my boat, it just adds more clutter to the floor that I don't want. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that video. I had a great day out on the lake. Uh, the trolling motor performed exactly as expected. No issues there whatsoever. The Minn Kota Power Drive, highly recommend it. If you got a boat that you want to do specific things with, like lock onto a spot, have a true north heading, have cruise control, troll with cruise control, and, and a few other features. I don't regret this purchase at all. The link will be in the description down below of where you can get yours. Uh, I bought this one through Amazon, had a really fast delivery, uh, got here as expected as always. And uh, Minn Kota has not disappointed me yet. Uh, like I said, the other pieces that I use to put all this stuff together uh, will be, the links will, will be in the description as far as battery chargers, circuit breakers, wiring, you know, so, I'm not going to be able to show you how you wire it up. Just follow your instructions. Do what it says do and you won't go wrong. You guys get out there and have some fun. Get out on the water. Take some friends. Take some family out there. And get a line wet. This is Michael saying if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And I'm out. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Doing good. Going to even be better in a couple minutes. <laughs>